Hi folks, welcome back to the kitchen. We're going to do our super crunchy dill pickles today. We've uh, harvested our cucumbers out in the garden. We cut the blossom end off of the cucumber and they've been soaking uh, down in the refrigerator in a salt brine. And what we had, uh, we got a quart of warm water we dissolved three quarters of a cup of good pickling salt in that water. And, uh, once it dissolved, we added it uh, more water to make two gallons. So we added, um, what would it be? Be eight quarts for two gallons. So we added seven more quarts to make the two gallons. And the pickles have been in the fridge. They've been down there for two days soaking in that brine. So now we're going to get the rest of the process started. So what I did to get ready is I did a test to see how many of uh, our pint jars would fit in my canner. And I came up with 15 and we're using wide mouth pints. So once we had that uh, established that we were going to do 15 jars, I did this. I cut up some uh, cucumbers that I already had in the fridge into spears and I stuffed one of the jars completely full of those cucumbers as many as I could get in there and then I added cold water up to where the headspace would be which is going to be about a quarter of an inch and then I dumped that water into a measuring cup and we came out to half a cup so that tells us how much brine we need so for 15 jars and if we have a half a cup for each jar I just figured eight cups so our brine solution that we're making uh, meets that just fine. So what I've got in our pot so far is I've got uh, two quarts of water and to that we added six cups of vinegar and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Alright so so far in our brine we have two quarts of water, six cups of white vinegar and then to that we added a quarter cup of sugar and a half a cup of pickling salt and we're also going to add a tablespoon of pickling spice, which we've got in one of these little bags that I was able to buy at my store. But you can use cheesecloth or uh, some muslin or something like that. But we're going to throw that right in the pot. So we got that heating up, and we're going to bring that to a boil. We have our lids heating. We have our canner. We're going to take our canner up to about 140 degrees right now. Uh, if it gets a little higher, that's fine. We're going to be cooking these at about 180 degrees. So Kelly has been prepping the jars. So in the jars, she's put a teaspoon of mustard seed, a teaspoon of dill seed, and because we don't have fresh cloves of garlic yet, we've got a teaspoon of the dried granulated garlic, which is equivalent to a uh, clove of garlic. So we're going to start cutting our pickles. We're going to cut them four inches long because that's what's required in these jars. Anything under four inch we'll just don't worry about and cut. But we're going to cut them lengthwise into quarters and make spears out of them. And then we're going to stuff these jars as tight as we can get them. So we'll come back when we got our jars stuffed. So we've got all of our jars stuffed as tight as we can get them. We're waiting for our brine to come to our boil. Our canner has been preheated. Uh, Kelly's going to take the rest of our cucumbers because we used up just about everything that was in the bucket. And uh, we're going to make some refrigerator pickles out of these. And you can go back and uh, get the recipe for those on one of the prior videos. So our brine came to a simmer and we've got our jars filled up to a quarter inch head space. And now what I just do is I take like a plastic handle implement and knock out any bubbles that might be going on in the jar. Just give them a little shake. And then we're going to get these uh, tops wiped off with a little bit of white vinegar on a piece of paper towel. And then we're going to put our lids that have been simmering over there. And we're going to put everything in the canner. Stay tuned. So we've got all 15 jars in the canner and we've covered the jars with about an inch of water. And now we're going to bring our temperature up to 180. We've turned the canner up 
to bring the temperature up. And as soon as it gets to 180, we're going to start a 30 minute timer. Now the reason these pickles are going to be crunchier than normal is because we're not going to come to a full boil with this canner. And as you might think, if you come to a full boil, you're cooking those pickles in the jar. And that's going to make them get a little softer. Now some of the things that you're going to pickle, like beets or something like that, you do want those to tenderize a little bit. So I wouldn't do this method, obviously. But pickles, we like to keep them as crisp as we can. So that's why we're doing this more of a, it's kind of a, which maybe a pasteurization is what we're looking for. So we're going to sterilize the headspace of that jar because we're going to do it a little bit longer than your normal water bath, but we're going to do it at a lower temperature. And that should result in a lot crisper pickle. Now, we had some brine left, which is fine. So what you can do with this brine, if you have some more cucumbers, you can either save this brine for the next batch or cut up some more fresh cucumbers, stuff them in a jar, put the same amount of spices in the jar and fill it up with brine and just put it in the fridge. And basically you're making refrigerator pickles and after about a week they'll be ready to eat. And since you're eating them fresh, they don't have to be canned. They're in the fridge, they're going to stay cold and you'll have all of them ate up before they would likely go bad. There's so much vinegar in the recipe, they're not likely to go bad anyway in the fridge. So once this gets up to temperature, we'll start our timer. All right, we've reached 180 on our temperature. Uh, I've cross-checked with two thermometers. We're spot on. So we are going to start our 30-minute timer. Now that took a little bit to come up to temperature because when we put the hot liquid onto those cold cucumbers or the cold cucumbers it brought the temperature of the liquid down so when you put those cooler jars in here to the canner they bring that liquid temperature down as well so it's not going to come back to 180 degrees until those jars come back to 180 degrees so now we're there so we'll see you in 30 minutes okay we got about a minute left on the timer there so we're ending up here at about 183 we were as high as 186 at one point this pot's big enough where it covers two burners I just centered it on the two burners and our sweet spot was right around the D on medium but uh, there's such a, a large thermal mass here uh, think of it as like driving a freight train if it starts speeding up, it's going to take a while to slow back down and vice versa. If it starts slowing down, it's going to take a while to speed back up. The good thing about this digital thermometer is it shows you tenths of a degree over here on the right. So you can see what the trend is. It would be a little harder to do with that candy thermometer back there. So I recommend a digital. It worked out good for me. You just got to throttle that thing around like you're driving a car. There's our timer, so we can shut that down, and we can turn this fire off. Now what I'm going to do, because we've reached our allotted time, uh, normally if we were like steam canning or something like that, or if we were at a full boil, I would let this cool down a while. But I don't want those pickles to cook any longer than they have to, so they're done. So I'm going to take them out and put them on this counter. Remember, never put them on a, just a cold counter. Make sure you got a towel down. So we're going to take those jars out so they'll stop the cooking process. So as I'm taking these jars out, you might be able to see this jar lifter fits this jar really nicely because it's made for wide mouth jars. If you've ever used one of those cheap generic jar lifters that you buy at the grocery store, you'll kind of feel like they're just kind of pinching the top and you're not really picking it up right. But one of my jars wants to fall over in there, but that's not going to hurt nothing. 
So we're going to continue taking these out. But uh, if you can find this wide mouth jar lifter, they grab the jar so much better and they don't feel precarious like they're going to tip over. Or fall out, I mean. So there you are folks, 15 jars of dill pickles. And they should be nice and crunchy when we start eating them. As they sit here on the counter and they cool off, you're going to start hearing tink, tink, tink. And that's the jar sealing, don't be alarmed. All these little lids are going to suck down as that jar cools. So, give this recipe a shot. You can do this same process with that... Uh, refrigerator pickle recipe that we showed you last time a different flavor profile and more of sort of like a bread and butter type pickle but you could do this pasteurization method with those two uh, make that brine keep it warm uh, get it to simmer and, and uh, pack the jars the same way and process them the same way remember if you keep the same proportions on your brine and on your uh, your pickle recipe the amount of vegetables don't matter so if you're using the brine recipe for these pickles you can expand it or contract it do whatever you need to do so don't worry about the amount of vegetables just kind of figure out remember these pint jars take about a half a cup of brine each so you can figure on that so give this recipe a shot we're going to have a pantry full of pickles here per, pretty soon. So until next time here on Mark Kelly Farm, stay safe, stay healthy. If you like our videos, make sure you subscribe uh, so you know when we post another video, hit that little bell button. I'm not going to beg you to do that. You don't have to do that. But uh, if you want to see our videos on a regular basis, that's a good thing to do. So we love you guys. We'll see you on the next time.